Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Parallel C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be taking a more in-depth look into this idea of static partitioning. So in the last video, we looked at some of the basics of how we can distribute our work across our different threads. And specifically in that example, we were looking at the differences between static and dynamic partitioning using Intel's thread building blocks and some of their built-in partitioners. Now, I think in order to under, really understand um, static and dynamic partitioning, it's very important to understand what's actually going on underneath the hood and the different ways that we can implement these partitioning schemes ourselves. So we're going to start off with that by looking at a couple different ways that we can implement static partitioning. So we're going to start off by looking at um, these two different ways, right? Specifically coarse grained uh, static partitioning and a more fine grained static partitioning. So let's go ahead and start off with our first example here, which is this coarse grained method. So the majority of our example is the exact same as last time. So our setup for a problem is pretty simple. So we're going to be generating two to the 18 total work items that we want to um, you know, process in parallel. And those work items are just going to be these random numbers coming from these four different bins here. So a quarter of our work items are going to come from each bin. So we're gonna have um, work items that have different job lengths. So our proxy for our work that we're going to be doing is just sleeping for some number of microseconds here. And that number of microseconds, again, comes from these four different bins, right? So what we do is we set up our random number generator, and then we end up generating these uh, work items, right? Where a quarter of the work items come from each bin. Now, our actual work and our distribution or partitioning of our work is occurring down here, right? So in this case, our work uh, is just going to be this lambda here, right? So each thread is going to get a span of items that, we, that we're going to process. And then the thread is just going to you know, iterate over all of the items and sleep for that number of microseconds here. And the way that we're going to divide up our work is going to be at a very coarse grain level. So we're just going to fix our number of threads to eight in this case, and we're just going to equally divide our work across our different threads here. So our items per thread is just going to be the total number of work items divided by the number of threads. So each thread is going to get you know, a fairly large chunk of elements in order to process here, right? So the first thread is going to get the first chunk of elements, the second thread is going to get the second chunk of elements, and so on and so forth. So every thread is going to get items per thread number of elements. And then at the very bottom here, we have uh, the actual spawning of our threads that, we're going, that are going to process our work. So we just create a vector of these J threads here. Then we iterate over you know, the eight threads that we're going to spawn. And we just calculate the starting point for each thread. So the starting point is just going to be I times the items per thread, right? So um, you know, just those giant chunks of elements that we're going to give to each thread. And then we just in place back into our vector, um, you know, work, right? So the uh, work function that we're going to do or this uh, lambda that is going to process our work. And then of course the span of elements that we wanna process, right? So starting from, you know, our starting point for items per thread number of elements, that's going to be a range of values that are going to be um, iterated over, right? Through this lambda. Now that's going to be a coarse grained example. It's coarse grained because we're dividing up our work at a very coarse grain level. Each thread is just getting this items per thread number of elements, consecutive elements that is. Now another way we can do this is at a more fine grain level. So let's open up um, or split the screen with our fine grain uh, 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 partitioning scheme, our static partitioning still, um, but at a more fine grain le level with this round robin assignment. So our setup for our um, our, our example here is exactly the same, right? We still have these four bins and generating two to the 18 total elements. What's going to change now though, is how we're going to iterate over these uh, work items that we're going to process. So instead of just giving each thread, you know, one eighth of our total um, elements here, since we're spawning eight threads, um, we're still gonna give them equal number of elements here, but we're not going to give large chunks of elements to each thread. Each thread is instead going to get every other element inside of our vector. Um, so in this case, you know, thread zero will get element zero, thread one will get element one, and so on and so forth, right? And then we'll just repeat that until we run out of elements total. So at the end of the day, um, thread zero is going to get um, elements zero, 8, 16, 24, 32, and so on and so forth. Um, thread one is going to get elements one and nine and 17 and 25 and so on and so forth. 
Uh, thread 2 is going to get elements 2, 10, 18, 26, and so on and so forth. So we're just alternating the elements that we give to each thread. So we're dividing up our work in a much more fine-grained way. We're doing this per element round robin distribution. So we just um, give out a work item, a single work item to every single thread, and then we repeat that process over and over and over again, right, at this very fine-grained level. So let's go ahead and see the performance difference between these two different approaches here. This very coarse-grained approach versus this five grain, uh, very fine-grained approach for our specific example here. So we can start off by you know, compiling our coarse-grained approach here. So we're going to be compiling with um, O3 optimization level and linking against a uh, lib uh, p thread here because we're using this uh, std j thread. And then also um, we're using this uh, C++20 standard, right? That's what we're compiling with because we're using both this J thread and this std span. Okay, and we can also, while we're at it, we can compile our fine grain example. So this is where we're doing that fine grain round robin distribution of those elements and give it the exact same compilation flags, right? O3 optimization level, link against lib P thread and set our standard to C++20. So let's go ahead and see the performance difference between these two different um, uh, implementations. So we can first uh, time our coarse grained implementation. So that's where we just give each thread a large consecutive chunk of elements. And we can see that it takes about 4.5 uh, total seconds to run. Now, if you remember from our example last time where we use the static partitioner with the same example and we use that TBB parallel for each loop, we got about the exact same result here. So around 4.5 uh, seconds to process all of those elements, right? So we've implemented something that's very similar to whatever um, TBB is doing, or at least uh, we're getting the same kind of uh, end performance result as what that static partitioner was giving us uh, by default with TBB. Now let's look at this other approach here, right? So let's go ahead and time our fine-grained approach where we did this uh, fine-grained round-robin scheduling of our elements. So instead of each thread getting a large chunk of elements, um, it gets kind of this stripe of elements, right? So we're, it gets elements along this stride of, of eight in this case because we have eight uh, total threads, right? So let's go ahead and see um, how our performance differs, right? Using this different uh, static partitioning scheme. And we can see our performance is a whole heck of a lot better. In fact, um, it's very similar to the performance that we got with even you know, a load balancing dynamic um, work distribution scheme that we got with TBB last time. But it's entirely static, right? We didn't actually need any load balancing in this case, um, as long as we knew kind of uh, you know, what our work looked like ahead of time, right? And how we could maybe balance that statically. So you can see here, we're processing all of these items, right? The same number of job items with the same kind of distributions of integers. It's taking us 3.26 you know, or 27 seconds to process those two to the 18 items versus this 4.5 total seconds to process all of these items, right? And again, still with a, um, a static partitioning scheme here, just a slightly different one, one where we're doing this fine grained round robin distribution instead of this more coarse grained um, uh, chunks of elements that we're giving to each thread. And this is something that we could even tune uh, further, right? So we don't just have to assign, say, one element, right, or one eighth of the total elements to each thread. We could do something in the middle, right? So maybe we do the same kind of round robin distribution, but instead we give two elements to each thread, or three elements, or four elements, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of different strategies that we could take here. Um, right, in order to you know, do these different static distribution schemes. But even between you know, different methods of static distribution, there can be very different uh, performance characteristics. And it really depends on um, the workload that we're optimizing for. Okay, so that's a bit about uh, a bit more in depth on how we can implement our own kind of static partitioning schemes. Now, um, there's of course plenty of ways that you can make either of these static partitioning schemes uh, look terrible performance wise, right? Uh, and static partitioning often doesn't work all that well when we have very dynamic data. So data that we can't predict the performance of ahead of time or the duration of ahead of time that we have to schedule to threads. That's really where dynamic partitioning um, and dynamic work distribution really starts to um, uh, have a have a large impact in our performance. So we'll start talking about that more in the next video. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. I'll make sure to link uh, below these uh, reference pages from CPP reference for JThread and Span that we used in this example. 
And of course, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.